So uh, let, let me get started and uh, I'll begin by setting some of the context. Um, so the, the theorems I'm going to discuss today are going to be uh, about automorphic representations of general linear groups. And of course, we'll specialize to GL2 eventually. Um, and we'll tie this in with the more classical theory in, in a little bit. But let, let me begin by setting up some notation. So at the beginning, at least, F is going to be a general number field, uh, AF, the Adele ring, and uh, replace V of your number field, FV will be the completion. So AF is the, the restricted direct product of those completions. And in general, if I have an automorphic representation pi of GLN of AF, so GLN of the Adele's of F, um, I can do various things with it. I can extract various pieces of data from it. Um, so first of all, I can write it as a restricted direct product of the local components pi v. So for, for every place v of your number field, you'll have uh, pi v. That'll be an, an irreducible admissible representation of GLN of FV taken with a suitable grain, grain of salt if v is uh, an Archimedean place. And uh, thanks to um, the work of various people, we have access to the local Langlands correspondence for every place v of the number field. So that means we can associate to every local component pi v uh, rec FV IV, so rec here is short for reciprocity. That's my notation for the local Langlands correspondence for GLN. That will be uh, at finite places, a, a vague linear representation of the vague group of the place V. Um, and at dark medium places, just a representation, a semi-simple representation of the, the local vague group. Um, so th th this is something that might seem kind of complicated if you're not familiar with these things. Um, but if you've ever been to any lecture about general automorphic representations, then you've probably heard about the Sataki isomorphism, which is what this specializes to at all of the unramified places. So if, if V is a place at which pi V is unramified, which is, of course, finally many of them, then um, this, this rec FV pi V will be an unramified representation of the V group. In other words, it'll just be um, uh, an n by n, n, n by n matrix, which is specifying the image of, of Frobenius. Um, so the, this, this uh, local representation will be unramified, and it'll be the unique semi-simple representation, which is unramified, and which sends Frobenius to a matrix whose polynomial is determined by pi v under the, the usual Sataki isomorphism. Um, but because we know the local, local length correspondence, we can also uh, get some information at the ramified places as well. So the, 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 those are the basic structures associated to an automorphic representation of a general linear group. And once you have those, you can formulate the, uh, the Langlands functoriality conjecture for general linear groups. Um, now, before I, I state this, or before I, I, I talk about it, I want to emphasize that, that this is only a special case of the general functoriality conjecture, which was kind of stated by Langlands already in, in his first, first paper on the topic, uh, Problems in the Theory of Automorphic Forms, which is an amazing historical document, which I I really recommend you, you, you look at if you haven't read it before. Um, so he, he considered a, a general, general reductive group um, and punctorial lifting is associated to, to general L homomorphisms between L groups of reductive groups. Um, here I'm going to stick just to the case of general linear groups, which is already very interesting. Um, so to state this conjecture, we start off with an automorphic representation of a general linear group. So GLN and the Adels, uh, which I assume is, is cuspidal. And I suppose that I have R, that's going to be an algebraic representation of GLN. Um, so you, you can imagine, if you like, a, a highest weight representation associated to uh, a dominant character of maximal torus in GLN. Then the, the conjecture states that there should be a functorial lift of pi along R. Um, so if R goes from GLN to GLM, that means an automorphic representation of GLM of AF. Um, and here, you know, n could be two and m could be a million. So the, 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 the GLM of AF could be a rather complicated group. Um, and the, 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 this uh, lifted representation is supposed to be characterized by um, uh, the, the description of its local components in terms of the, the local Langlands correspondence. So we've, I've, I've written, written the equation here. So the local Langlands correspondence for GLN uh, is it's a wonderful bijection between, on the one hand, the, um, the isomorphism classes of irreducible admissible representations of GLN of FV, and on the other hand, the equivalence classes of either vaguely representations at the finite places or representations of the, the Vey group at, at, the, at the Archimedean places. So the fact that it's a bijection means that any representation is completely determined by its associated Langlands parameter. 
And what we're doing here is we're specifying the language parameters of all the local components. So I'm saying that if I take the local component at V of R lower star of pi, then that's the one that corresponds under the local language correspondence to the language parameter, which is the image of the language parameter under, of the original representation under the representation R. So the, the, this is a recipe which is kind of quite easy to understand at the, the, the ramified places. And we, we do something very similar at the other places where there is ramification. Um, so the, this is a conjecture which is very, very hard. Um, we don't know very much about it. Um, so let, let, let me discuss the basic examples where we, we do know something. Um, first of all, it's okay to assume that R is irreducible because if R is not irreducible, then we, we write it as a, a sum of irreducible representations. Uh, and then we see that the, um, the lifted representation in that case is probably going to be obtained by the Eisenstein's by you know, using Eisenstein series to, to lift from a, a, a Levy subgroup of GLM. So it's enough to consider the case where R is irreducible. And then the, the, the simplest general linear group we might take is GL1. So that, that's the case where n is equal to one. And the, the, then of course, the, the, the irreducible algebraic representations of GL1 are easy to describe. They're just the, uh, the, the, the characters, which are the, the, the powers, the integer powers of the, the topological identity representation. Um, and in this case, well, we know what the automorphic representations are. They're just the, the Hecker characters, the, the, the continuous characters of the, the idels, which are trivial on the principal idels. And the, the functorial lift in that case would just be, you know, take, take the nth power of your Hecker character. So that, that's something that, that's, that's really very simple. Uh, the first case where it gets interesting and where we already don't know how to, how to solve the problem in general is when n is equal to two. So talking about GL2. And in this case, all, all of the, the irreducible representations are uh, up to a character twist, the, the symmetric powers of the standard representation. So if you want to, you can imagine GL2 is acting on the space of um, polynomials, uh, li 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 linear homogeneous polynomials in X and Y. So things of the form AX plus BY. If you make that, make that identification, then the M symmetric power representation is just the induced action of GL2 on the space of homogeneous polynomials of degree M. So that, that, that's a nice model for the representation. And um, what do we know, know in this case? Well, the, the first case is, I guess the very first case would be M equals one, that would be the identity, and there's nothing to do. The first non-trivial case is when M is equal to two, so that's the, the existence of the symmetric square lifting. That was established in general by uh, Gelbas and Jacquet in 1978, so that, that they proved that the symmetric square of an automorphic representation of GL2 always exists. Um, using converse theorems. And they proved, moreover, that it's cuspidal, this lifting is cuspidal, if and only if um, pi is not automorphically induced, or, or in other words, pi is not isomorphic to any twist by a non-trivial Hecker character chi. Um, so th th that's a very nice theorem, and it's one that has you know, many very significant applications in, in the world of automorphic forms. And I mean, the, 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 those applications are among the reasons that we're so interested in Functoriality. Um, the first significant application is that you, whenever you have a symmetric power lifting, starting off with a symmetric square, you, you automatically get a bound towards the Ramanujan conjecture. Um, so that that would be um, purity for the, uh, the 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 Langlands parameters of the, the local components. Um, and and indeed the kind of ideal strategy for proving Ramanujan conjecture in general would be you know. First, you prove functoriality, uh, and then you deduce Ramanujan as a consequence. Um, and the, that, that's something that was already predicted uh, as, a, as, a, as a good strategy, or identified as a good strategy, I should say, by, by, by Langlands in, in that, that first paper I mentioned. Um, another important application is uh, the Langlands tunnel theorem. Um, so this is the application of cyclic base change for GL2, uh, as established by Langlands in his book, to prove the, the automorphy of um, uh, two-dimensional representations of Galois groups with um, finite solvable image. So, so in particular, icosahedral and so not 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 icosahedral, tetrahedral and octahedral Galois representations. Um, the, 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 the idea in that case is to kind of start off with a, a representation of the Galois group with finite image. And then construct an associated automorphic representation by kind of building it up using cyclic descent. Um, 
but then, then you have this issue that sometimes there's a step where you need to kind of use six of descent, but then you can't can't identify what it is that you, you've got after the descent. And um, additional information about the automorphic representations, such as the existence of the symmetric square, is often often very useful in that context. Um, and the, 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 there are many other applications uh, of this result as well. Um, and we can go further. Um, so we also have the existence of the symmetric cube and the symmetric fourth power. These were established by Kim and Shahidi and Kim, again, by understanding uh, the associated L functions using the, the, the Langer Shahidi method and then applying converse theorems. But uh, it is the case that you can go further, but uh, only in general if you, if you restrict the class of allowable automorphic representations. So the, the results that I mentioned so far apply to uh, any automorphic representation of GL2 over any number field. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to restrict the class of number fields that I'm, that I'm allowed to treat. Um, and I'm going to restrict the class of automorphic representations over those number fields that I'm allowed to consider. Um, but having paid that price, I'm then going to be able to, to prove the existence of many more functorial lists. And this, the first thing I want to do is to identify the class of automorphic representations that, that I, I want, to, want to talk about. Um, so here's the, the basic definition. Um, so the, the, these are going to be the the regular algebraic automorphic representations of general linear groups. And I'm going to, I'm going to characterize these in two ways. Um, and the characterization I give will, will make sense for those which are cuspidal. Um, so the, the, the first characterization is um, the, the one given by uh, Pazell in, in his article in, in this uh, Ann Arbor proceedings from the, the, the late eighties. And th this is in terms of the, the Langlands parameters of the, the infinite components. So you say, I take uh, an arbitrary Archimedean place my number field, and I take the associated Langlands parameter. So that will be a representation of the vague group of the completion FV. And then I restrict that to C cross, which it, I can always think of as being a subgroup of, of the vague group. And the, the requirement is that up to this normalization factor of the determinant of one minus n over two, that should be algebraic, when, when I think of C cross as being the the uh, the 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 the, the Deline torus, so the, the 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 real points of the restriction of scalars of of, of GM. Um, okay, so, so the, 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 I've made a mistake here with my slides. The, 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 this is the definition of algebraic, and then regular algebraic is if if the, the associated representation is is multiplicity free, basically. Um, so the, 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 that that that's one way to think about this, um, and the the the, the the kind of motivic way to, to think about this is that the uh, the restriction of the Langlands parameter to C cross at infinity is telling you what the, the, the Hodge numbers have to be of the, the associated motive, if there is one. Uh, what, what's the, the second equivalent characterization? Um, well, the, 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 this is uh, in terms of the, the cohomology of arithmetic groups. So I can say equivalently that pi is at regular algebraic if I can choose First of all, um, an irreducible algebraic representation of the restriction of scalars of GLN, or in other words, um, a, a tuple of algebraic representations of GLN indexed by the, um, the Archimedean places of, or the, the, the embeddings of F and C rather. And then secondly, a, uh, an open compact subgroup of the finite Adels, which would be a level subgroup, which has the property that the, the invariants for that level subgroup in the finite part of pi are non-zero. So I can talk about the action of ramified Hecker operators. Uh, and having chosen that data, I want to have a Hecker equivariant embedding of those uh, invariant vectors inside the cohomology of um, xk with coefficients in v. Okay, so here xk, that would be the locally symmetric space of level k of GLN which you can think of as being basically an avatar of the, the cohomology of the, the congruent subgroups of, of GLN of F. Um, and V here is the, the coefficient system on the locally symmetric space associated to the, the irreducible algebraic representation. And the, the fact that these two um, characterizations are equivalent is a consequence of the fact that you can compute the, 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 cusp, the contribution of cusp forms to this cohomology using GK cohomology and then the, the the, uh, the 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 terms of representations which have non-trivial GK cohomology are exactly the ones which are uh, having Langlands parameters of, of of this type. Okay, so th th that's what it means to be regular algebraic. 
And uh, let, let me say what this means in more classical terms. The first case to consider is when uh, f is q and n is equal to two. So I'm talking about cuspid automorphic representations of GL2 of the adults of the q. Well, a cusp form can be interpreted either as corresponding to a holomorphic new form of weight, weight at least one, uh, or in terms of, of, of mass forms. And the ones that are regular algebraic are exactly the ones that correspond to uh, holomorphic new forms of weights at least two. And this should not be surprising to you if you've ever heard of the eichler schmorr isomorphism. So the, the, the eichler schmorr isomorphism computes the, the cohomology of uh, congruent subgroup of SL2Z with the coefficients in an algebraic coefficient system uh, in terms of um, modular forms. So cusp forms and modular forms of, of, of weights, weight at least two, where the, the weight depends on your choice of coefficient system. Um, and the, the, that's exactly the, 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 the second characterization here for, for that, that particular group. And more generally, if I, instead of taking F to be Q, I take it to be a, a totally real field, um, but, but still talking about GL2, then you can, do, you can work things out uh, and you can see that pi is regular algebraic if and only if it corresponds to a Hilbert modular new form. Um, so that, that, that will be a function not on the upper half plane, but on the, the product of the upper half plane where the, the product set is a set of embeddings of F and R. Um, and the, the, then you'll have a system of weights associated to your new form, so that, that these will be non-negative integers. And the, the condition for the, the new form to correspond to a regular algebraic automorphic representation is that the weights are all at least two. So that, that's the same condition as in the case F equals Q. And then you also require the, the parity of those weights to be independent of the the Archimedean place. Okay, so the, the, those are the Hilbert modular forms that correspond to um, regular algebraic automorphic representations of GL2 of the Adels of a, a totally real field. Okay, so the, the case that I'm going to consider for this um, functoriality problem is I'm going to consider GL2 over a totally real field, and I'm only going to, going to consider those automorphic representations which are reg regular algebraic. Um, but but, but well, then that's so we're going to be able to prove rather general results. Sorry, sorry is that a question? Yeah, yeah, it is a question. So if you take an imaginary quadratic field in a, a harmonic one form that appears in cohomology, but it's not algebraic by your definition, regular. In other words, the you know what I'm talking about? I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I don't think about differential forms very often, so I, I, I probably. I mean, it don't appears know exactly in cohomology. Is what I mean. It does appear in cohomology. So uh, the algebraic condition is not just that it appears in GK cohomology of the locally symmetric space. That's all I'm clarifying. Um, well, I, so I'm not, not sure exactly where I'm making a mistake, but uh, I, I said before that I, I made a mistake here when, when I, I said algebraic. I, I, on the, the language parameter, I, mean, I meant to say that uh, it's also multiplicity free in the appropriate sense. Is that the, is that, is that, is that the objection or is it something else? Uh, I'm just trying to understand which uh, forms on GL2 you immediately have gone to real fields, totally real fields. If I took an imaginary quadratic field, and I looked at the first Betty number, harmonic one forms, so that would be appearing in the locally symmetric space. Yep. And then you could ask about its symmetric powers. And, yep. Uh, so you're not addressing that in the lecture, obviously. Uh, I, I, I'm not, not addressing that in, in this lecture. Um, I mean, what, what, what one can treat... Um, uh, those those automorphic representations over an say imaginary quadratic field which are conjugate self dual, but of course that, that that's by by reduction to the totally real case. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to do anything say for an elliptic curve over an imaginary quadratic field, which which that, that doesn't come by base chain for the sake of argument. Okay, now that's exactly the case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't know how to do that case at the moment. I'm afraid. Right. A any more questions before I, I carry on? Okay. So w w why am I restricting to the, this class of automorphic representations? Um, well, it's because they have associated Galois representations, and there are lots of tools for studying um, Galois representations, which kind of in turn allow us to study automorphic forms um, in a way that we, we can't do in general. And what's the theorem? 
Well, the, the, fir the fir first theorem I want to state is that the existence of automorphic representations, sorry, the existence of Galois representations associated to, to automorphic representations in this class. So I, I take a totally real number field and I take a, a cuspidal automorphic representation, which is regular algebraic. And I've introduced this acronym CAR for, for things satisfying that condition. I guess it would be C CRA, um, but it, it, it's too late to change that now. So the, 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 then the assertion is that you have a compatible system of Galois representations associated to um, any, any such object. So anytime you choose a prime P and an isomorphism between QP bar and C, really it's not necessarily to choose such a lot of data. It'll be enough to choose an, uh, an embedding of the, the coefficient field of pi, which is naturally a subfield of C into QP bar. But th this is a convenient way to, to phrase, for, for, for phrase, um, phrase that choice. Whenever you make such a choice, you get a, a continuous n-dimensional representation of GF, which is the absolute Galois group of F with coefficients in QP bar. And it satisfies this characterizing relation for all but finitely many places V, um, the, the Vaidlin representation associated to the, the local component uh, is what you expect uh, if you want to have compatibility with the local Langlands correspondence. Um, so at a ramified places, this is just saying that the, the characteristic polynomial of, of a Frobenius element uh, is what it should be uh, under the Sataki isomorphism. And then of course you are ho hopefully getting um, information at ramified places, although you might be excluding those with this uh, almost everywhere condition. And furthermore, if your pi is not only regular algebraic, but also polarizable, which in other words means that, it, that it's self-dual of the twist, um, and th that's a condition that's satisfied for every automorphic representation on GL2, um, then you have this local global compatibility relation, not just at all but finitely many places, um, but at all finite places B. And that, that includes um, the, the places at P, the, the piadic places of a number field, so in particular, we're saying that the, the, the representation R iota of pi is the RAM of the periodic places. So I can use this recipe of Fontaine to associate a Vaidlin representation to it. And the, 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 then having done that, I have this local global compatibility relation. So the, 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 there's a, a, a lot of difficult and, and subtle mathematics contained within that statement. And um, attributing this theorem accurately re, re, would require me to, na to name a very large number of people. So I hope you'll forgive me if, if I don't do that. But the, 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 that's the, the existence of Galois representations associated to, to this class of automorphic representations. And it, it allows us to make this, this further definition, just working over a totally real field. I, I say that an n-dimensional representation of the absolute Galois group is automorphic if it arises from one of these, one of these cusp forms. So if, if you like, it, it's in the image of the, the, uh, the automorphic to Galois map whose existence is asserted by the, by the theorem. Okay, so it, here's the, um, the, 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 the reason that we can do more for this class of automorphic representations. So I, I start with a pi on GL2, uh, and then let's assume it in the first instance that this empty metric power exists. Well, the, then by thinking about the language parameters, I can check that these, the symmetric power lifting is also going to be regular algebraic, and the Galois representation associated with symmetric power lift is going to be the symmetric power of the two-dimensional Galois representation associated to pi. Um, and the reason is that you can characterize the left-hand side and the right-hand side in terms of the, the characteristic polynomials of Frobenius elements. Uh, and then, then those satisfy the relation that you want, essentially by the definition of, of a functorial lift. So uh, another way to think about the, the, the global Galois representation uh, associated to an, to an automorphic representation is it some kind of global object that magically knows all of the all of the language parameters at all the local places. So it's kind of a, a glue that keeps them all, all together. And this isomorphism here is a manifestation of, um, of that idea. And conversely, if you want to try and prove that the empty symmetric power lifting exists, then one thing you can do is start off with the, the empty symmetric power of the, the two-dimensional Galois representation and then trying to prove that it is automorphic in the sense of the definition here. And that's a reasonable thing to do because we have a lot of tools to try to prove that Galois representations are automorphic. The, the, the number one tool being this idea of an auto automorphic lifting theorem uh, that we'll, we'll talk about more in, in a minute. Okay, so it, it, here's, first of all, a theorem that was proved, um, I guess sort of three, three or four years ago now by uh, James Newton and myself. Um, so th this is 
symmetric power of punctual triality in the case of um, polymorphic modular forms over Q. So you start off with a cuspidal automorphic representation of GL2 of the ideals of Q, which is regular algebraic, therefore corresponding to a new form of weight at least two. Then the assertion is that all of the symmetric power liftings exist. And um, okay, again, I was not careful enough here. So when M is at least two, it is the case that the symmetric power lifting is cuspidal if and only if pi is not automorphically induced. Uh, or in other words, it, it, it's uh, not, not a CM form. Um, so the, 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 that, that's as strong a statement as one could, could possibly hope for. And we proved this um, using uh, various tools that have been invented by other people to study modular forms. In particular, we used overconvergent modular forms, which kind of together form this uh, island variety, which was constructed by Coleman and Mazer. And we also used in particular the fact that the, um, the, the, the two-adic chain level one eigenvariety, so the, 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 that's the one which contains this as a risky dense subset of points, the, 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 the two-adic modular forms associated to um, classical modular forms of, of, of level S or 2Z. We, we, we used the fact that, that, that that has quite a simple geometric structure as had been previously computed by um, Buzzard and Kilford. But that, that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is, is a more general theorem, which is uh, this one, uh, which we proved, uh, I, I think we, we put the paper on the archives maybe in November or December last year. Um, so now we replace Q by a general totally real number field. And we say, take again, a, a, a regular algebraic classical automorphic representation of GL2. Then all of the symmetric powers exist. And okay, again, I should have put m greater than equal to two here. The, the symmetric power liftings are cuspidal precisely when they should be, namely when you, your automorphic representation is not automorphically induced. So I'm going to talk in more detail about the proof in a minute. The first thing I want to mention is that the proof that we give is new, even in the case where f is equal to q. So we kind of reprove the previous theorem um, using, using new methods. Um, and I think that that was kind of inevitable because the, the structure of the, the two-adic term of a one eigen variety of a Q, that, that's something that's very special to the case where the base number field is Q. I mean, it has a very pleasant, very simple structure, at least if you look, look at the, the part of the eigen variety that's above the boundary of weight space. And th th that's not something that you can expect to have in general. So you, you could, certainly can't expect to take a, a totally real number field of degree one million over Q and then expect to be able to compute part of part of the, the, the structure of the eigen variety or, or expected to, to, to look very nice in some sense. Um, so one has to give a, a different argument that doesn't rely upon um, knowing thing, knowing that the, the, like a particular number theoretic structure ha happens to be very pleasant, if you know what I mean. Um, the second thing I want to mention is that uh, one actually can deduce a slightly more general result from this. Um, so what one also gets the, the existence of the, the symmetric power liftings for cusp forms, which are uh, which have the property that their, their infinite component is square integrable. Um, so in terms of Hilbert modular forms, that means that the, the, the weights KV are all at least two, but what one no longer requires the, the parity condition. Um, so the, the, that that case can be reduced to the regular algebraic case when 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 there are there are associated gala representations. <laughs> Okay, so I, let, let me start talking about the strategy now, but let, let me first pause to see if there are any questions from the audience. Okay, well, if not, I'll, I'll carry on. Um, so the, the strategy that we use goes back to uh, my work with uh, Laurent Clazel from about 10 years ago now, when we kind of out outlined a Conjectural program to, to prove this theorem, um, but we weren't able to make it work at that point. We were only able to say, well, if you assume some other conjecture, then you can prove this theorem. Um, and what, what, what James and I have done is we, we've kind of introduced some, some new ideas that go a little bit beyond um, the, 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 this program that the, 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 the allow one to get to get to the end unconditionally. Um, so what, what's the idea? 
Well, we're going to prove the, the existence of the, the anti-symmetric power lifting by induction on M, but so but by induction on the, the degree. And we're going to use the, the, the tools that we mentioned previously, name, namely uh, automorph automorphic lifting theorems. Um, and we're going to try to use those to establish the, the automorphy of the, the, um, the, the, the anti-symmetric powers of the, the associated two-dimensional Gala representations. So what is an automorphic lifting theorem? Well, well, one can definitely give a whole lecture on that topic, but <laughs> let me just say it very briefly. If, if you have a pianic Gala representation, so let's say with coefficients for simplicity in GLN of QP, then you can always conjugate it so it takes values in GLN of ZP. And um, the, the reason is that uh, the Galois group, it's a profinite group, it's compact. Um, so it, its image will be a compact subgroup. And any compact subgroup of GLN of QP is conjugate to a subgroup of GLN of ZP. That, that, that's fairly easy to prove. And if you reduce modulo P, then, then, then by composing the reduction modulo P, then you get a representation over uh, into GLN of FP, and that's called the associated, associated residual representation. And uh, an automorphy lifting theorem, well, there, there are probably hundreds in the, in the literature, but they all have the same general, general shape. You say, I have some n-dimensional representation over QP that I want to prove is automorphic, and I assume that the, the, the associated residual representation of FP or FP bar um, is automorphic in the sense that it, it arises as the residual representation from something which I know is automorphic. And then under that, under that assumption, and then maybe some other technical assumptions as well, then I can lift the automorphy to the, the representation that I'm interested in. And the, the reason that, that one can do this is because you can control the set of liftings of a given mod P representation using Galois deformation theory um, and Gallo deformation theory is now kind of a very, very effective theory for, for, for kind of controlling what, what that, that set of possible liftings looks like. Okay, and why is that a reasonable thing to do here? Well, let's say we're interested in proving the automorphy of the m symmetric power. And let, let, let's say that M lies between P and 2P, where, where P is on an auxiliary prime. Um, well, then it is the case that the, the m symmetric power representation of let's say GL2 in characteristic P, first thought of as an algebraic group, is reducible. So if you take the, 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 the naive m symmetric power of the standard representation, that is a reducible representation in characteristic P, although it's irreducible in characteristic zero. And if, if you compute what you get when you take the reduction modulo P of the, the m symmetric power of the, the two-dimensional periodic representation associated to your cusp form pi, then it, it looks like this. Um, so it has generically two irreducible pieces, so to, to, to two irreducible Jordan Holder factors. One of them is a character twist of a lower dimensional symmetric power. And the other is the tensor product of the, um, the Frobenius twist, so the, the arithmetic Frobenius twist of the two dimensional piece tensored with um, uh, another lower degree symmetric power. Um, so the, the, that, that tensor product will be, will be irreducible in general. And the, 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 this is the, the basis of the induction. Um, so you, you say, if I have a strong enough automorphic lifting theorem, then to prove the automorphy of the pianic representation, it's enough to verify the automorphy of the mod P representation. And I can try to do that by kind of breaking it up into pieces and then verifying the automorphy of the Jordan Holder factors using that I know the automorphy of the lower degree symmetric powers by induction um, and, and then proceeding that way. And th this is a particularly effective tool because, well, Bertrand's postulate says that there is always a prime P such that M is sandwiched between P and 2P, um, at, at least one, well, once M is big enough. And, and we're allowed to assume that because we already have the existence of the, the symmetric, symmetric powers in low degree. Um, by the way, just as, a, as an aside, I think it's interesting to note that um, Sayers conjecture, so that, 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 that's the modularity of two dimensional mod P representations of the absolute Gallo group of Q. So that, that, that was proved by Kari and Vanta Bajay back in 2008, uh, also using automorphic lifting theorems as, as an essential tool. That, that also uses Bertrand's postulate. Um, so it's sometimes it's surprising to me that, that, that Bertrand's postulate is kind of again making a significant contribution to the theory of automorphic forms, but there you are. Can I ask a question, another one, just around this? I mean, Bert, Bertrand's sure. postulate is a rather weak thing about primes. Um, yeah. If you were starting in a higher dimension than GL2, 
and try to run this kind of inductive argument where you would take a prime P, which might be in a much shorter range and do some linear algebra like this. Is there any strat? I mean, so far you seem to be stuck on GL2, right? Yeah. And is there a good reason why you can't do anything? Well, the, 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 the good reason is that at the moment, the, 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 I mean, this is, this is becoming less true, but it's true at the moment. The, 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 the only really good automobility theorems we have were, only work for Galois representations without repeated Hodge take weights. Okay. Um, so the, 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 that's okay on GL2, because if I start off with a, a two-dimensional representation that has distinct Hodge take weights, and then I take a symmetric power, then it'll still have distinct Hodge take weights. Okay. Um, but there's but sort you, of, yeah, so I was just wondering if there's some linear algebra situation where you can exploit it and then maybe looking for primes in not dyadic intervals, but short intervals, <laughs> and then you could, I mean, yeah, yeah it's a very the, good the, use. The, the, that, that's an interesting question. And I think actually when Kyra Van, Van Tepe did, did their proof, they really needed that there were much stronger forms of Bertrand's postulate available. Okay. Um, I have to say, I, I have not considered uh, whether that might be the case here, but I guess I, I will have to do that now. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. Um, okay, so the, the, this, this, is, this is the basic idea. <clears throat> and the, what one does have to, have to caveat this because the, the, the only automorphy lifting theorems that we know um, require technical hypotheses. Um, and the, 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 these are usually divided into, into two types. So one always has necessary conditions on, on the Galois representations um, for, for them to rise from automorphic forms, because there are Galois representations which don't come from automorphic forms, at least in the sense that we've described here. So in particular, you, you want them to be um, Durham at the periodic places so that, that, that they have a chance of coming from geometry for the sake of argument. Um, and then what one also often needs to impose technical conditions as well, which, which, are, which are kind of hard to get rid of. Um, so the, 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 there's this nice, nice, nice paper in, in, from the annals in 2014 by uh, Barnett Lamb, G. Garrity, and Taylor called Potential Automorphy and Change of Weight, which includes some very, very general automorphy theorems for, for n-dimensional Galois representations. Um, but, but almost all of the theorems in that paper include conditions like the assumption that the residual representation is irreducible and that the, the residue characteristic P is large compared to the dimension. Um, and of course, assuming that the residual representation is irreducible would completely kill this argument because we're, we're kind of approaching with a residual representation which is reducible. Um, so the, the, the reason that what one can make, make this work is because uh, I proved uh, an automorphic lifting theorem in the case of residually reducible representations, um, again, about, about 10 years ago, um, and that, that has been improved a little bit since then. Um, so what one has to work within the context where, where that theorem applies. Um, those, those technical details, I think, are too technical to discuss and talk like this. So I'll just, just ignore them from now on. And I will concentrate on the question of proving that the automorphy of the residual representation, so the, 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 this representation at the top of this page, that's what one really needs to, to get to. Um, so one of the things that makes, makes this possible is uh, I proved a level raising result, which is basically kind of establishing completely or enough of one of the conjectures in my earlier paper with, with Clazelle, uh, which is the existence of certain, certain level raising congruences, which in particular allows you to, to start off with um, something like, like uh, an Eisenstein series constructed from something in, in degree P minus R and degree two, 2R, and then force there to be a congruence to, to a cuspal automorphic representation. Um, so it's very important to be able to do that, um, but, but that, 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 that has been done, and I, I believe that one side. That, that, then the question becomes, how do you actually establish the, the automorphy of the, the, the two Jordan holder factors here? Well, 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 the first one is fine, because it is a character twist of something we're assuming is automorphic by induction. So there's nothing to do there. Um, and indeed, I've written that again here. The second one is much more problematic. So generically, and I think we probably want to want to force ourselves to be in the generic case, this tensor product is going to be irreducible. So it'll be a tensor product of two representations that we know are, are automorphic by induction on, on M. But of course, we don't know tensor product functionality. 
in this level of generality. So uh, we, we can't just proceed from the automorphism of the tensor factor to the automorphism of the tensor product. Um, if, if we could do that, then, then we would probably be able to kind of establish many other cases of functionality that we're very, we're very interested in that we don't know how to, to approach at the moment. So we have to do something different. And the, 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 the argument that we give to, to deal with this, I think, is the, the, the second main contribution of our work, apart from the, the, the level raising result, which I, I just alluded to, but which I'm not going to discuss, discuss any further. OK, so what, what's the strategy? Well, first I want to make a little preliminary, like, preliminary reduction. Um, so I'm going to assume that pi has weight zero or in classical terminology that it corresponds to a Hilbert modular form of parallel weight two. That's an easy reduction. And I'm going to choose a congruence modulo P which between pi and another, another cusp on pi prime, which corresponds to, let's say another Hilbert modular form of some, some large parallel weight. So that the, the tensor product that I consider here will be, will be Hodge type regular. Um, so here I've got a tensor product of periodic representations and phi p here is now not just the arithmetic Fabinius in characteristic p, but a, a lift of the, of the arithmetic Fabinius to an element of GQP. So I have an honest periodic representation which has distinct hodgetate weights, and that, that's what I want to prove is automorphic. That, 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 that statement will be what I use to verify the residual automorphy of this uh, two R dimensional gamma representation. And what's the issue here? Well, I mean, the, 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 the various issues, but one of the issues is that um, the, the, the coefficient fields of um, automorphic representations are, are very mysterious, and we don't really know how, how to say anything about them in general at the moment. And, and, and in fact, I mean, here's, here's something which I think is an open question. So take a eigenform, classical Hecker eigenform of level SL2z, so of some, some weight k, then the, 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 assert, the assertion is that there should exist another eigenform of some possibly different weight L of level SL2Z, such that the, the coefficient fields of the two eigenforms are linearly disjoint. So the, 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 that's just asserting that for, for any eigenform, which will have a coefficient field, a number field, you can find another eigenform which has coefficient, co coefficient fields kind of different enough that, 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 that they are disjoint over Q. As far as I know, I don't think what, 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 what knows anything about how to prove such a statement. And I'll, I'll say, why that, say why a statement like that will be useful in just a minute. Um, so the, the, the reason that I care about such things is that there is an, there is an, an action of the automorphism group of C on the set of possible automorphic representations, basically just by conjugating the Hecker eigenvalues or conjugating the Hecker polynomials, which have coefficients in the coefficient field of our automorphic representations. And this, this Frobenius twist of the piadic representation can be thought of as the piadic representation associated to a different automorphic representation where, where I've applied this, this conjugation action. I mean, th th that's not very difficult at all. It really just follows from the, the, the definition. And what, what we're going to show, because we, we don't know kind of what Frobenius twist is <laughs> as an automorphism of the coefficient field of pi, is we're actually we're going to show that this tensor product representation, R iota of sigma pi tends to symmetric power of R iota of pi prime is automorphic for any automorphism of C. And well, once we've done that, we'll then be able to choose sigma to be the automorphism corresponding to Frobenius twist. And then that, that will be the periodic representation that we want. And uh, I, I alluded in my abstracts to the, the utility of the fact that Bex Z is simply connected. Uh, that, that's going to enter into our proof of this statement. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, it's, it's a kind of induction and the kind of induction that it is will be revealed at the end. So it's a, it's a secret induction argument. Um, the base case is where sigma is the, the identity element. Um, so when sigma pi is just pi. Um, so why can we deal with this case? Well, we're going to use an automorphic lifting theorem for the associated chaotic gala representation. And if you reduce it modulo p, so, so we reduce the tensor product modulo p, so we get R of pi tends to sit sim r minus one of R of pi prime. Well, pi and pi prime were chosen to be congruent modulo p. So this is just the same as R of pi tends to symmetric power of R of pi reduced modulo p. And of course, you know, if you've done 
first course in the representation theory of compact Lie groups, you, you know that if I take uh, two irreducible representations of SU2 and I tensor them together, then there's this Kleb score down formula for describing what the, the, the decomposition is of such a representation. And we, we apply that here and we get um, a reducible representation. So it, it's sim r direct sum of twist of sim r minus two. And by induction, we know the automorphy of the two irreducible factors. So we can use the automorphy lifting theorem to prove the, the automorphy of the original representation that we're interested in. So the, the, this is like a, a, another layer of the original argument in my paper with Lazell, where we kind of force a reducibility in characteristic P and then verify the automorphy of the, the Jordan Holder factors and then lift that to, to characteristic zero. Okay, so the, the, that's the first case, but, it, but it's not, not, a, not, the general enough, not the general case because um, we don't know if, if Kubinius acts as the identity on the, the coefficient field of pi, and in fact, it probably weren't in general. Now, the, 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 this is where the, the idea I was saying before about coefficient fields being disjoint comes in. If one could choose pi and pi prime so that their coefficient fields were disjoint, then I could choose an automorphism of C, which acted as the identity on the coefficient field of pi prime, but acted as the Frobenius twist on the coefficient field of pi. Uh, and then I could just kind of conjugate the tensor product, pi tensor sim r minus one of pi prime by that automorphism to get something with the desired property. Um, but unfortunately, we, we don't know how to construct a pi prime of that property. So that, that's why we do need to do something a little bit more subtle. And I'm not going to treat the general case yet, the second case I'm going to treat is when sigma, or rather, not, not sigma, because that's an automorphism of C, which is too much data, but the, the image of sigma in the, the Galois group of the, the Galois closure of the coefficient field. I'm going to assume that sigma is an element of an inertia group. So I, I'm, I'm saying, I suppose that there is a prime L and a place of the number field such that uh, sigma is this element delta V of the inertia group. So any element of the inertia group of the, the coefficient field of my automorphic representation. So in this case, we can prove that the tensor product of uh, R of sigma pi and the symmetric power representation is automorphic. And the reason we can do this is because the automorphy of this piadic representation is equivalent to the automorphy of any member of the, the compatible system that we naturally write down. Um, but that, that, that's, that's not too hard to check. And that existence of the compatible system means that we can kind of maybe choose a different member of the compatible system that's more favorable. And the one that's favorable is uh, the one that's in characteristic L. So it's gonna be an, an allatic representation where L is the prime defining the inertia group that our, our Galo automorphism of the coefficient field is, is coming from. Uh, and to be maximally precise, we, we, we choose the, the member of the compatible system corresponding to uh, some isomorphism between QL bar and C which is chosen so that the inverse of that isomorphism restricted the coefficient field that will induce an allatic place of, of the coefficient field and we want it to be the place of B that we're talking about. Um, so that the reason that we make that choice is because when you compute the, the allatic Galois representation associated with sigma pi or delta V of pi, that's going to be the, the, the conjugate by an automorphism of QL bar of the allatic representation of pi. And not just any automorphism of QL bar, because we started off with something in the inertia group, it's going to be an automorphism of QL bar that acts as the identity in the residue field. So although, although it might change the elastic representation, it's not going to change its reduction modulo L because it's acting by something that's in the, in the inertia group. So there's going to be an isomorphism of mod L residual representations um, just because this Gallo conjugation doesn't change anything in characteristic L. Um, so you, you have an isom isomorphism like this in characteristic L, and then again, you, you apply an automorphy lifting theorem to and lift the automorphy to, 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 to the elatic representation, therefore proving the automorphy of one member of the compatible system, and then, then, then you get the, the, the whole compatible system that way. Okay, so I, I'm finally ready to reveal what the induction argument is. Uh, in general, uh, uh, if I have an element of like my Galois group of the Galois closure of the coefficient field, call it sigma. Because Q has no every unramified extension, or in other words, because spec Z is simply connected, that Galois group must be generated by the, the, the inertia groups at all the primes. 
right? I mean, otherwise, if I if I took the the subgroup generated by all the inertia groups and I took the fixed field, that would be an everywhere and ramified extension, and we, we know that there aren't any non-trivial ones. So that means I can write the restriction of sigma to this 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 Galois closure as a product delta v one or delta v s of elements of inertia groups, possibly at different primes, um, and possibly for different places v i lying above those primes l i. And the, the, the induction is going to be on S. So the, the case when S is zero was the case when sigma was the identity. Um, we treated that case already. The case when S was one was when sigma was actually in the inertia group and we treated that case already. And, and in, in general, if I have um, S, S elements in my product expression for sigma, I'm going to have a chain of congruences between the, the compatible system for sigma equals one and the compatible system for, sig for, the, for the general element sigma. And that chain of congruence is going to have S links. And each link is going to be a congruence between representations and characteristic L1 up to LS. So I have to apply a, a lifting theorem, I guess, S times in order to be able to, to, to bridge the gap at each step. Um, so w w one thing that's, that's worth remarking is that uh, the, the, these primes that ramify in the coefficient fields, we have absolutely no control over them, right? And, you know, it's just some number of fields. The simplest coefficient field that I know off the top of my head is uh, the, the coefficient field of the, uh, the cusp form of weight 24 and level SLTZ, which is Q adjoining the square root of 144169. I mean, right? That, that, that's already quite a complicated number field, uh, at least as far as quadratic fields are concerned. Um, so, in general, one should certainly expect that you know this coefficient field will, will be ramified at two. So we're going to have to be able to apply a, a toadic automorphic, lift, automorphic lifting theorem that can transform the automorphy of one representation, which is a tensor product of a two-dimensional thing with something that might have dimension a million, to the automorphy of another representation, which might be again the, the same two million dimensional representation. Um, so that, that's something that sounds quite tricky. Uh, and one of the things that, that James and I do in our paper is we, we, we write down what we call a functoriality lifting theorem, which is specifically adapted to um, uh, prove that the automorphy of one tensor product implies the automorphy of, of another. And it turns out if you're, if you're only burying the, the two-dimensional tensor factor and keeping the other one the same, then it's enough to have a good control of the deformation theory of the two-dimensional Galois representation. Um, and we, we, we do have such control, and such control was already needed in order to be able to prove the, the for example, the, the two adic lifting theorems that are used in the proof of success conjecture. Um, so the, 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 that's one of the, the technical ingredients that's needed to make the argument work. But when we do that, we, we, we can get all of the, the, the automorphy, uh, or, 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 or all of the, the, the automorphic tensor products that we need, and then that's enough to get back to the, the original theorem. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to say. So I'll, I'll stop there. And thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you.